Hello and welcome back to Angie B Crafts. So today is another one of my Tag Tuesdays and what I'm going to be doing today is a little bit of um, graffiti, I suppose you would call it. So I'm going to start off, because I've got an MDF tag, I'm going to be starting off with some gesso just to make it less absorption. Make it less absorption? Just to prevent it absorbing. Let's get my English right. Too much of my coloured paint. So just slapping on that layer, if you've seen any of my MDF videos before you'll know that this is most of the time what I do. Sometimes if I want a darker background or um, if I'm doing spray acrylics I won't always put the base on. But for this I do tend to um, and it just stops everything absorbing in. So we're going to use just the white gesso and give it a quick blast with a heat gun and then we are going to introduce some colour and the colour that we're going to use is from this little tray here and in here I have got my Dina Wakeley paints mainly um, there's a few dilution shimmer paints in here um, there are also a couple of Tim Holtz paints uh, I'm not sure what else we shall have to see but I'm just going to give this a quick blast and then I'll come back and show you adding these on what we need now is some colour so I've been tending to go with the same sort of vibrant um, yellows and turquoises and pinks I'm struggling to move away from that I'm gonna stick with purple I think this time so I've got eggplant what goes with that um, but -dum, but -dum. Oh, it's gonna be turquoise again peacock I love those two look at how cool they look together aren't they just delicious delicious right now if I want a little bit of sparkle we can add on some of the dilution shimmer paints. Now I know one of these has started to go, no it's not that one, it's started to go a bit solid but it isn't that one so we'll use that one. We're going to start with those three, we can add other colours on as we choose to but this is a rough palette. Now I'm going to just, what I like about these paints, if you're not used to the Dina Wakeley paints, they just come with this little nozzle and it's, it's nice and narrow um, so you can just put little amounts so I'm not being particularly precious about where I put the colour, I am just plonking it on. Okay, and then we're just going to have a little bit of the pink. She says, knowing that this, see this has got a bigger hole in it, so it's going to come out a little bit faster. But oh, these shimmer paints, honestly, I'm not a shimmer girl these shimmer paints are mwah, they're beautiful so I don't want to end up with mud so I'm going to start by just spreading out some of the turquoise and I'm going to be picking up other colours but I'm aiming to not do too much over mixing so you can see we're getting some purple some paler purple because we're mixing the turquoise with the pink and I'm not being too worried about gaps either because I think that adds to the distressed look I do want a little bit more up there there we are because I like the distressed look I like to be able to see what's underneath okay so there's layer number one now what I tend to do is to clean up this get one of my journals open it on a blank page and just put the paint on it's the start of something and i do have lots of pages that are the start of something that eventually get something else added onto them but they start very similarly okay so what can we add on to here now i think a little bit of yellow 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 and we have yellow here but we have yellow in the shimmer mm. shimmery yellow what I'm going to do now is I'm not going to apply direct I'm going to pop it oh this one's thickened up you can see that's more like a worm 
I'm going to apply it using this which is a little one inch silicone brush which obviously isn't a brush at all it's really really flexible and it's a nice way of adding in little bits of colour into smaller areas. Now the reason I'm not panicked by the fact that this yellow is thicker is because it's texture pure and simple it works as a texture and texture is always always good in my view so I'm just putting these in I'm kind of just plonking I'm not really thinking about oh that's got to go there that's got to go there I'm seeing where it ends up and you can start to see then what you're left with and you can you can then add in so I'm, I'm now going I'm just using the very edge this is a very very I don't know if you can see how fine it is if I turn it on its side you might it actually goes into a very very fine edge there so when you start doing this sort of a movement just tapping you get some really fine lines and it all adds to the texture and the look of what you're making One thing that I find particularly difficult with this is keeping it vertical or horizontal if I'm doing horizontal ones. I've got a real knack of ending up with the lines on a bit of a, a wonk and I don't know why I do that, I just seem incapable of keeping the lines perpendicular for some reason, but I don't let it worry me. Oh, I'm liking the look of that now. Let's see if we've got any more left here of the yellow. Add a little bit more. Oh, I think we'll have to get a little bit more out. So you're starting to look a little bit arty now. I want some coming in here. A little bit up at the top, I think. Right, I'm going to clear that off a little bit and just start adding the lines in. So you can see with this using the lines you can spread the length so you can make it as long as you want it to. And because I put it straight onto the other wet paint I can also introduce the lines on the other wet paint. And this is just the sort of thing that I I enjoy doing, I enjoy creating little mini pieces of art, if you like. This has now got dry paint on it. You will see as well, there are, I don't know if it'll show up on camera, there's some areas, such as here, where it's slightly bubbled, and that's because there was thicker paint. Um, and what you've got to bear in mind is when you're using acrylics, <clears throat> it's a plastic, so you're basically putting a plastic layer on top and sealing it. So if you've got a thicker area and you heat it intensely it's going to start to bubble because it's a plastic and if you don't want that look then just let it dry naturally but it's a look that I really enjoy. I love the effect of bubbles be it big ones or tiny little ones like we've got down here. I just like the look of bubbles. So I've picked up my crayons. Now my crayons, these ones particularly, are getting very worn. Um, so these are my Vicky Bootin ones and these are my Jane Davenport ones and I'm tending to use a mixture of the two these days. These ones you can tell are very much a favourite um, and very dilapidated looking. <laughs> Got some teeny tiny little bits. Right so let's choose a colour. I think white is going to be a really good colour to start introducing and I'm just going to start sticking a little bit on and then what I tend to do is get my finger and give it a rub. And what you're seeing here is some of the colour is actually coming through and there's a really really simple reason for that. I haven't dried it completely and that is intentional. I'm not coming at this bone dry because I love the way that the paint gets picked up by the crayon. This is one of my current favourite things to do is just adding crayons on. 
you can see there I've gone a bit wonky with my line so I'm just going to thicken it up so it's a bit straighter there we go I think we want a little bit of vertical there we'll pop some vertical down there so we're starting to get quite an interesting look but I don't want to leave it at that I want to add in some more I want to bring out some of that colour that's behind the white now because there's quite a lot of white on there so this is where I'm going to start reintroducing some purple now these crayons are the very very soft crayons I haven't used them as much as I probably should have to be honest these are the I think that's called skin tone yeah silky skin they're called um, but they they're just they're very very creamy they're a very creamy crayon I do like them and I'm going to go with the purple on the horizontal only I think and then if I want another colour on the vertical it's just going to add more interest so again graffiti maybe isn't the look that you'd call it maybe I was wrong in saying that I don't know I suppose it depends what it is you're drawing so we also need some pink now I'm not as keen on these pinks for this project this one is quite pink even though it looks red but I don't think let me just have a look no it's the wrong it's too much of a ready pink I don't know if that shows up well on camera but it's got too much red in it I'm looking for something that's very distinctly pink so I'm going to re resort to this one which you can see is getting smaller and narrower and I'm going to go just on the one side on each of the vertical whites and even though this one's picked up a lot of yellow I'm still going to add the pink in that one and a little bit there and then again get my finger and give it a rub this is just such a nice way of introducing colour and the fact that the paint underneath mixes in just makes it more interesting because you'd never quite know what you're going to get so I think we're starting to get something really nice there I like it I do like putting these lines on so there's one thing left that I want to do but I am going to first of all get my heat gun what happens with these when you put your heat gun on it just melts them more into it and you'll see it if I actually keep the heat gun keep the camera on with the heat gun you'll see what happens let me see if I can catch it it kind of liquefies them I don't know if you can see that or not might not be able to catch it but oh there you go you can see a little bit there it's just liquefying the crayon and in my mind, rightly or wrongly, that just makes that crayon stick a little bit more. So this is why I use the heat gun on the crayon. And the other thing with this is they've got a lovely aroma when you heat them up. I don't know what's in it, it smells orangey. I don't know if it's got an orange oil in them or not. It's definitely the Vicky Bootin ones that have the smell. I just really like them. The next medium I'm going to introduce is my Stabilo All Pencils. Um, these are the colours I currently own. You can get other colours as well, but these are the ones I've got. And what I like about these is, as the name suggests, they write on anything. Um, and I like to add scribbles onto things. I'm going to go, rather than going for black, I'm purposely not doing the black, I'm going to go for the blue and see if I get the colour I want with the blue see if I can actually get it to stand out enough and I'm also going to add some white in okay I may add some of the other colors but to start with I'm going to do this and what I'm going to do is this is the the graffiti bit I suppose it's just doing some acemic writing okay so acemic writing is writing that doesn't have a meaning you're not trying to say something specific with it you're not writing words or it can be words but they're not legible the idea is that you can't actually read what's being written with academic writing um, which is one of the reasons I really enjoy it because you can just you don't have to write anything or if you want to write something you can quite often just looks like my signature 
which is completely illegible. So on here now we have got the base layer of white coming through. We then have the first layer of colour which had the pink, the turquoise and the purple. We then have the next layer of colour which was the yellow which came out orangey yellow and mixed with some of the other colours which we then heated. We got the bubbles so we got additional texture which you can see there. I'll turn it that way but there you go you can see the additional texture. We then used the crayon to add in the vertical and horizontal lines and we set that just by heating it and then we used the acemic writing just to add the little graffiti look. I'm just trying to get that one little bit off. Yeah, there we go. So that looks pretty much done. The only one thing that I've got left to do on that is to edge around it because I don't want it to look, if we look on the sides, it just looks a bit messy and untidy. So we are going to use a Pro Marker. Now, did you know that Windsor and Newton have actually bought Pro Marker? Don't know when it happened, but when I went to buy some new Pro Markers, it came up as Windsor and Newton. So they're a different brand, so they do look different. If I show you the other one, I don't think I've got my black anymore, I think it's gone. Yeah, this is this is what they used to look like. It used to be letter set. And now it's Windsor and Newton. They're the same pen, they're just owned by a different company. So if you see them, don't panic if they don't look quite the same as they used to. But know that if it's the older style, then it's going to be an older pen as well. So if you see them on eBay or anything like that, you can know that it's an older pen if it's got the older style. I think the overall size of the pen and everything's the same. Yeah, it's exactly the same pen with the two ends. It's just the label round it. So this is just a quick and easy way. I mean, you can use, you'll have seen me, if you've seen any of my videos previously, you've probably seen me using my little um, stays on ink pad which I have, it's just over to the side of me at the minute, but I just thought I'd use this for a change. And what I like about this, particularly on this style of tag, is you can use the other end as well, just for getting into these bits. So you can get a little bit better coverage on these little hiding pieces that are trapped in corners. Do, do, do. There we go. I think we're pretty much done. Oh, there's one little bit of white there. There we go. That's gone. It's a piece of pencil. So there we go. Another way to decorate a tag. So again, with each of these tags that I've shown you, you can choose to put a sentiment on top of it or you can add other bits and bobs onto it if you want to. These are purely ideas of ways in which you can decorate them as a baseline and then you can add more and more to it. Thank you very much for watching. Bye for now.